Ice Crappers, Tom from the Ice Crap app. Today is Wednesday. March 10th, 2021. We appreciate you tuning in. We love hearing your questions, your comments, your scrap prices, things that you want to hear us talk about more. So by all means, post below. We'll make sure to get you those answers. If we can post the answers during our live reports, we'll make sure to get you those answers. So post your questions today and we'll get you some answers pushed out there. So without further, to do, for further ado, don't forget every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we like to go live on Facebook where we have our weekly report. We post these videos on YouTube afterwards. And of course, you can always check out our other pages, our other our videos that we've posted. And we have a new podcast coming out called Scrap You Later in the coming weeks. So stay tuned to that. We try to debunk some of the myths around the scrap metal world, as well as giving you tips and tricks on how you can make more money with your scrap. Over the last week, we've seen copper prices have a little bit of a tumultuous period, but overall they've been relatively steady. And what have I said for years, scrappers? We want steady. We don't want big ups, we don't want big downs, we want small, steady, incremental increases that keep the markets moving, that keep us captivated, that keep the prices in line, where we have to be able to have a good return for the amount of work that we put in, whether it's from a scrapyard's point of view, a scrapper's point of view, or manufacturer's point of view, that scrap has value. We just want to make sure that we're being paid the fair and correct amount. So by using the iScrap app, the national price averages that you can see posted behind me at iScrapApp.com, you can always tune into your app as well, and you'll be able to see what some of the prices are for the last day or so, because we try to have these updated every single day based on the reported prices that you, the scrapper, pushed to us. Now overall, these copper prices have been stable, and last week we did see a couple of large decreases. 10 to 15 cents per pound happened relatively quickly in one day, only the next day to be followed by another round of declines. Overall, the market kind of steadied itself out and is hovering in a trading number around $4.03 a pound. That was about five minutes ago before I walked into here to do our weekly report. So with market stabilizing in that $4 per pound trading range, that gives scrap yards, brokers, traders, processors the ability to know where the markets are and of course you to be able to know where the markets are. It takes away a little more of the haggling where when you have big price increases or big price decreases, some of the things that we see happen are people try to haggle back and forth or they, really, they get really upset with the prices. When that happens, it creates a big domino effect that really is an unfortunate thing. But it's just part of the industry. So we're gonna be talking about some of those things, price negotiations with scrapyards in some of the podcasts that we're gonna be producing. Now we know that many of you have asked us questions about becoming a Patreon supporter. And becoming a Patreon supporter is something that costs about 26 cents a day. And you're gonna say, Tom, why do we need to pay you 26 cents a day for you to give us more tips and information? Well. You don't need to do anything, but if you want and are interested in learning more about the scrap metal industry by becoming a Patreon supporter, it gives you extra tips and extra market news that gets pushed to you every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, on top of the regular push notifications that we send out through the iScrap app to your Droid and Apple devices. Now with these markets really being at a very strong point right now in the middle of March, we're looking forward towards the second quarter. Where the second quarter is going to go is going to be very interesting because as copper prices are trading very strong, we have a lot of things going on outside of the economic picture that are going to bring things in and we're not really sure where they're going to be going. 1.9 excuse me, trillion dollars is about to be printed out of nowhere. Oof. So if you future taxpayers get ready to pay that back at some point in time and maybe you know never or the country declares bankruptcy, who knows what's gonna happen. But with $1.9 trillion being printed, we are sure to see some type of inflationary period in the second half of 2021. What does that mean? Well, when you print that much money and you inject it into the economy, you gotta have some type of price changes somewhere. Whether it's labor rates going up, gas prices going up, food prices going up, rent prices going up, utility prices going up, or our favorite, commodity prices like metals going up. You know, a lot of people dislike gas prices going up. 
Who wants gas prices to go up? And we've already seen in the incoming or the new administration, we've seen gas go up about 47 cents per gallon over the last five to six weeks. Now, those increases are going to continue as we see strongholds coming in on the commodities and the oil markets, which should be pushing those oil and gas prices up. But simultaneously, we should begin to see and continue to see copper, aluminum, steel, iron ore, Tungsten, lithium, all of these other markets prices are also going to be increasing at the same time as people are expanding production for electric vehicle batteries, expanding production for the aluminum that goes into a lot of these electric vehicles, expanding production into an infrastructure bill to redo bridges, roadways, barriers, concrete, all these type of things are going to need rebar and bollards and all of these things exist and are going to need more scrap more metal and with iron ore prices continuing to go up we expect to watch these markets closely and figure out how we can have the scrap prices maintain strong levels and share that information with you uh, you know for, exa for example over the last three weeks we've seen steel prices up about thirty dollars per ton now owning a scrap yard has given us a very unique perspective because not only am i reporting to you as the ice scrap app representative but as a scrapyard owner and someone who is actively trading metals every single day, the perspective and point of view that we have is so different than other people because we get to buy scrap from peddlers, sell scrap to larger scrapyards and brokers and processors, and get a lot of information and feedback from both groups, including our own inside of the iScrap app office. So by compiling all of this information week after week, day after day, that's how we can give you better reported prices, better market news, and we're able to take it and really boil it down because you don't need to know that iron ore is trading for $173 a ton where it was $50 a ton, but what you do need to know is that there's a massive demand for iron ore right now, and with the demand out there for iron ore, scrap steel prices have upticked because it's much quicker and cheaper to take scrap steel and iron and make it into new products opposed to taking that iron ore and creating steel out of that with additional layers and processes going into that. So we're watching these markets really closely. We, we briefly mentioned lithium before. I mean, the United States is so far behind in the lithium producing market that moving forward, we're going to have a heavy reliance on, com uh, on countries like Australia, China, and Chile and those countries producing massive amounts of lithium are going to cause problems in the electric vehicle market moving forward because what we're going to see is a massive demand and then a massive reliance on overseas metals where we're trying to not only manufacture and produce these cars in the country but also be able to find safe and protective ways to mine these metals out of our U.S. soil. So a lot of different things that we're watching for right now. What does that mean for the lead car battery industry? Well, you got to figure. I read a statistic a little while ago that they said by 2030, all brand new cars are going to go from about 4% being electric vehicles today. And in a short, a very short nine years, they're predicting that 45 to 50% of electric vehicle of all new cars will be electric vehicles being sold starting in 2030. So what does that mean? Fast forward nine years from now, what do we need to get to during those nine years to ensure that that happens? Well, we need good recycling networks for the old lithium ion batteries. We need new, new infrastructure put into place that creates and publishes and, and puts up more electric vehicle charging stations, more ways to find those charging stations. The infrastructure is going to have to be put in for different highways where they're talking about having magnetic railways that could connect to these electric vehicles to create more of a self-driving market. Well, what does that mean? All the major roadways in the country are going to have to be redone with a dedicated HOV lane for these electric vehicles and these self-driving cars that are being produced, researched, and tested right now, where over the next you know, 10 years or so, these are really going to come to the market.
You know, you look at some of the manufacturers out there like GM and Ford as, and Tesla that have self-driving or assisted super cruise control type of things where the car will drive itself as long as your hand is near by the wheel. And these different computer functions that give your cars artificial intelligence, you're gonna need a network both for internet and roadway to be able to take all of these massive pieces of information and drop them in so things run safely, number one, smoothly, number two, and efficiently, number three. I mean, think about cell phones today. I know a lot of people that have two cell phones. I know people that have three cell phones. Well, what does that mean? If inside of a small office building with 20 people working there, there's, let's just round it at 20 devices, that means that the cell phone tower that's down the street not only needs to handle that office building, but thousands of other people that are jumping around from car to car, driving by in their homes, traveling for work. These cell phone towers had to be built out for years and years and years and then updated as we went from 3G to 4G to LTE to 5G and whoever knows what G is going to come next. So. You know, fast forward, think about the cell phone towers compared to electric vehicle charging stations. It took a long time for these towers to pop up and get populated and then get updated, but it did not, it took a very long time for the electric vehicles to even catch wind. And then moving forward, the electric vehicles, you're gonna have to have charging stations everywhere. So in the coming weeks, we're gonna have a podcast talking about the massive expansion of cell phone towers, then how they're going to be able to take that expansion of cell phone towers and apply it to the electric vehicle charging market. It's not going to be the easiest thing, but it's going to be really, really interesting to see how the infrastructure is maintained, developed, and implemented in the coming years. Now, the aluminum market continues to be very strong in the two to two and a half year high uh, pricing range right now. We've seen gold come back over $1,700 an ounce. But of course, we always talk about catalytic converters sponsored by rrcats.com. And the team over there has shown us that rhodium prices have dropped about 10% in the last three trading days. Platinum and palladium are down. These are some market pullbacks, which aren't really that shocking considering we were watching these markets so closely and after the Chinese New Year when a lot of traders came in they were able to buy and hedge a lot of material and then we saw a little bit of a slowdown but overall we're still seeing about three to five percent off of the all-time highs for average catalytic converter prices and don't forget rrcats.com will quote your cats via serial number or via picture serial numbers always get you a much quicker quote. Now, scrappers, don't forget, every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we try to do our weekly report, post our live video, post our blog out there to give you more information on your scrap. You can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page. You can be able to become a Patreon supporter by signing up through the link that we'll post shortly. You can always sell your cats to rrcats.com. Most importantly, share your stories, share your prices. Let us know what you're looking to learn from us about the scrap metal industry so we can help you make more money with your scrap. Scrappers, my name is Tom from the iScrap app. Today is Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. We look forward to hearing your questions, love seeing your comments and your posts. And until next week, scrap safe, scrap often, and I'll scrap you later.